And they were excluded by that system. Yeah. Okay. So the way my experience with the NHS initially was um, to treat one diagnosis at a time, which they prioritised, and didn't see that they were linked. But I, they are linked. Um, particularly my, my OCD and my eating disorder. Part of my OCD was about exercise and certain exercise at a certain time and certain number of calories and that kind of thing. And I remember at the eating disorders unit saying, my exercise is getting worse again. I'm doing stairs, which were just up and down the stairs 100 times a day just for the sake of it. She went, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about your eating disorder. And it was like, but they're linked and... and Though those experience didn't, services didn't see them as linked, they were all in, we deal with one diagnosis and not the other. It was only coming into therapy where I was seen as a person from the, as a whole. And let's forget labels, don't want to talk about labels or what they mean. Let's talk about you and your interactions with everything. So I do have a lot of labels now at the minute on my records there's a history of depression history of anorexia nervosa currently I have atypical anorexia nervosa so that's an anorexia nervosa but without the weight loss um binge eating disorder um i have chronic fatigue i have um a couple of autoimmune diseases one of the blood and one that's affecting my thyroid which i'm on medication for was that under thyroid or was it like underactive thyroid? Well, it's like, it's underactive, but it's not my thyroid that's underactive. It's my immune system's attacking my thyroid as a foreign body. Um, How do you know? Because that's what doctors told me. And I read some re research that said, if you've got binge eating disorder, you're more likely to get this autoimmune disease. Yeah. Three times more likely to get this autoimmune disease and I think it's something to do with I don't know the thyroid contains a lot of your functions and metabolism and all that kind of stuff and when you're binging on like 40,000 calories at a time it puts strain on it I don't really understand it I just know that I've got that label as well um, how would you know it's your thyroid if everything's connected you're saying everything's connected you're a whole person so as a whole person then how do you know it's just your thyroid? Because that's the one that's been tested on my blood, so dodgy. But how do you know it's, your thyroid's not reacting to something else? I don't know. Because what, what you're saying is, looking at the picture, what you're saying is, you don't get tried as a whole person. So, for instance, the hierarchy, um, then... That gets seen to first, which was to save your life because you were you, you were vastly underweight. And then so if you're vastly underweight, we're gonna see that. But then let's have a then we can look at you as a whole person and, and kind of have a look. So you know when like I said before in previous videos, that um, if a fire alarm goes off in a house, you know, would you expect the fire brigade to come and turn the alarm off? And leave you'd say to them I need you to find a root cause so we need to go and put the fire out what if your thyroid's a fire alarm and there's a root there's a root cause or and these are just what ifs you know mm. just to say well okay your body reacts to 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 something it's a react it's kind of a machine that reacts we react to things all the time we react to each other you know our body reacts it's like if it, if a pain comes up it's reacting to it's telling you a message so what if the thyroid is part of the messenger i think it it, it could be in that my, my body's been under a lot of pressure for a yeah. lot of years so is the whole body then being investigated no or is it just because the the fire alarm's gone off which the is fire alarm the fire alarm went off they yeah. had did blood tests oh if we give you this pill your levels go up and then you're all right but has it cured the problem or is it just manipulated your levels? Yeah, it's that. So you've still got the problem. Yeah. Because if you resolve a problem, if you put the fire out, 
you don't have to keep coming on a weekly basis and putting the fire out at you know twice an evening mm. or whatever the fires the fires out mm. but your fire's not out your fire's still burning yeah it's like w- when i went to the chronic fatigue syndrome c- um clinic um because at about the time that i was having um issues with my thyroid um I were under a lot of stress and my um, eating binging was really bad and um, I was having lots of different symptoms. My body was really struggling. I got shingles three times in a year and I started um, having weakness and and, and um, different kinds of symptoms which were in line with MS. Um, so I had an MRI scan which showed it wasn't MS. Um, everything else was ruled out so um, I said that chronic fatigue and I was seen by the chronic fatigue service um, and they said yes I was showing I had all the symptoms of chronic fatigue so that was another label um, but they didn't they didn't know whether it was chronic fatigue syndrome or whether it was part of one of my other diagnoses or whether it was just a reaction to my body been in flight and fight mode for 40 years um and so this and that they were left like that and said um they're not going to do anything to support me um because they didn't think i'd cooperate them with with them because of my mental health issues and that were it um and not ask what you thought yeah and so I've had no support or guidance regarding the chronic fatigue and the pains and the weaknesses I get and 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 stuff. Um, so there's a because that there's wasn't a priority on the list of diagnoses. Right. So it becomes more about the diagnoses, and then you get buried in these diagnoses, and then you just go away and live with them. Is that is that yeah. what you're saying? But no one does. It still looks at the fire. Yeah, there's there's been because I've never I've never really taken diagnoses seriously. Um, my psychiatrist has always been, you know, you are real, you know, taking me seriously. So I've said, oh, I don't know what you're seeing me for. I'm just stupid. Why, you know, wasting your time with me? She's always like been saying, trying to for me to take myself seriously. You you know, you have mental health issues. You have this. You have that. And and it's like, so what? What does that mean? It doesn't help me in any shape or form. In some ways, it stops you getting help, um, because like help with my my binge eating disorder, the eating disorder service don't they're just commissioned to do anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. So you get no help for atypical anorexia. You get no help for binge eating disorder. What do you think's needed then for you to, to with all these diagnoses and? lack of support that you say you know the way that you've been treated you know what what would you say that's needed in the world to to help somebody that's you know all the alarms are going off you're getting all these labels that are just alarms really aren't they and they're not being you're not being looked at so but ultimately um, what I see from looking in on the outside and from what you're saying is ah well the reactions to what happened to you when you were a child, um, you know, not just not just by the abuser, but by your environment as well, giving you a message, giving you labels, and you've been buried in labels, but not asked who you are, yeah. or not looking at the root problem. So I what think do you think is needed? I think it's needed is thinking about what's happened to you rather than what's wrong with you. And because I always felt it was, there was something wrong with me. In my notes, at one point, it does say, Deborah's had lots of input, but with very little progress. So that made me feel bad that I wasn't doing, there was something wrong with me. I wasn't getting better like I should, or I wasn't working. I don't know. It just made me feel really bad about myself. But nobody questioned if the support was right. It was always getting lots of support, but with little progress. But it was the support that was wrong. What did you, what kind of support did you need? I didn't know what support I needed, but it showed that having psychotherapy 
was a real key turning point in my life. Um, and yes, the eating disorder service when I was forced to stop me from dying, but I would say it's psychotherapy that saved my life. Right, how's it done that for you? Um, it's made me understand myself more. It's it hasn't solved my problems. It's made me understand my problems more, um, and see things differently. It's also given me um, understanding behind those labels because if I could say to somebody like, "Oh, I've got an attachment disorder," or "I've got OCD," they will have assumptions about what that means, but they don't know what the reality of it is. Like an, an eating disorder, some people might think, "Oh, I know." you've got the label of an eating disorder of anorexia nervosa. I know what that means. They often don't know it's that voice in your head 24 seven saying you can eat that, you can't eat that. How many calories have you had? You have had 50 calories today. Well, if you have enough, what if you have a curly early, that's 97. So add that to that and oh, you've eaten too many, you haven't been for enough walk. People don't realize there's that going on all the time. Everybody has that going on in different yeah. speeds, different areas, yeah. cause that's your, that's your program, but it's yeah. not you. Yeah. You're the one that's listening to it. Yeah, but oh, people, in people I, I think that a lot of people, when they have, when you see labels, like I say, attachment disorder, people don't really understand maybe what that means, or OCD, what that means. Um, Should we put them all together, the labels then, and, and just say, because you said that some of the labels you didn't believe, or, you know, you one of the labels that you say that you've taken on board, which isn't you, we... Remember, we get told who we are, but we don't get yeah. asked. And so we cover ourselves with all these labels that aren't true. They're all made mm. up anyway. They can't be true. You're none of them. You're a human being. You started off as a human being. Mm. You will end as a human being. But you get labels in between. And you say, oh, this is me. This is my badge. This is who I am. And then we live up to the labels. But you're not them. Ultimately, from what you're saying, it sounds like... Um, I mean, labels can be good for some people. They need that, or that makes them almost feel validated mm. that there's something wrong. Um, but it did for me at a time. There were a time when I thought, right, you can't be stupid because your doctor wouldn't tell you you've got this. But you're still saying that you are. You still believe yeah. the label. So, but you were reacting. You're reacting. You know, like you know, like I said, I went back to the the fire went off, and then the alarm reacts and. And that's what you're doing, you're reacting. But the way that you're reacting gets labelled. So it's not, the labels aren't you, the way that you're reacting. So if you do this, and if you tap this for 20 times, you're going to be told you've got OCD, but you're reacting to feeling unsafe. So you, it's a reaction. Or, you know, you, you're starving yourself, so you want to control. And so then it's just a reaction. It's that you're having a relationship with food that's unhealthy. But that's your reaction, you know. So the ultimately your label is reacting yeah. to in different ways. And in these different ways that you react, we'll just name that. Yeah. We'll put a name to that. But we made the ultimately human beings made the name up anyway. Mm -hmm. But so what you're saying is you don't like them but they've been helpful to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because they've been, they've been helpful, although as my understanding and cognitive development over therapy and understanding about myself, I feel that other labels could be more appropriate, but it's what um, it's what fits at the time or what you only present to a, a doctor or something like that. There's a you know, there's that a, umbrella. Yeah, and so they look and think, oh, right, you meet this criteria, so you've got that. And also, to acknowledge that, l there might be labels that fit your needs more appropriate, like complex PTSD, but it isn't recognised in the DSM. So a lot of people with complex PTSD will get labelled with borderline personality disorder because they've got a similar criteria mm. and there isn't a criteria for complex yeah. PTSD in the DSM. So you'll get the label borderline personality disorder, which I've got. 
So do, would you say then, you know, with these labels, because it's, it's like a paradox, isn't it? It's that mm. You don't like the labels, but you like the labels. Cause yeah. Do you like the labels because they're validating? Or sometimes people, when they get labels, they won't change then. It's like, oh, well, I've got that, so I can mm. just be, I'll live my life with that then. Mm. When that's the, not true. I use, I try and use the labels in a helpful way to me, right. as in to take myself seriously and stop minimising stuff. Because like for, for a long time, I've minimised my difficulties or my issues um, and so it's not just my routines it's obsessive compulsive disorder which is an anxiety disorder which is to do with all my anxiety and it helps me think um, logically rather than just get caught up into my routines and it's my routines and it's my routines they help me um, take a step back and um, be a bit more understanding with myself and um, be a bit more um, realistic in what does that mean realistic being honest with myself and the reality rather than the reality that I've made up in my head which is more palatable for me sort of thing so I'll be under understand that because what you're saying is to be realistic, the label helps you to understand yourself and be more compassionate with yourself. But quite often you use the word because I'm stupid. So that just overrides all of it. And then there re is the reality, which isn't the reality really. Because what you're saying is if I'm realistic in this area, it helps me to be unrealistic with my thinking because I can carry on doing it. Does that make sense? Mm. So that's why I'm confused. Realistic is looking and saying, or in, in, in the way I understand it, is to say, realistically, I'm reacting to something that happened to, to the to the rape I, that you um, suffered from your father, the man was. Mm. And so I'm still reacting to that. Realistically, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Re and you're just reacting in many different ways because the issues have been resolved or mm. some of them haven't been resolved. So you get more and more labels and get buried in that, but that, that ultimately is what you're doing. Would you say that's right for you or wrong? I'd say that's right, that that's a more descriptive um, picture of why... I behave, think and feel like how I do because it's a reaction. But again, there's not just a paradox with me, there's a paradox with the NHS because they're saying they don't want to use labels anymore. But yet, if I went and I said, I'm reacting from this, what happened when I was little, no support, nothing. But I get is, nothing. Yeah, but but if I said, I need help with anorexia nervosa or I need help with you would get help but then you say you don't get help as well even though you go with a label and say that about the label because it's whether like, you meet their criteria yeah, or something so, th so that's the thing isn't it? it's what you're saying is such as when you were diagnosed with ME is but we're not going to help because we think you're going to do this and so you went away with no support and you know, or some of the support being the support that you needed or wanted. Um, so there's there's that in the labels, in the words that we use, in the language that we use, in what is it that you need? I don't know now. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, because there's so much in there that it buries you. So then you get lost in in the labels mm -hmm. instead of if if. So if I say, what would you need? Um, to help your reactions to the to the rapes that you suffered when you were a child. Support, um, understanding about how what my reactions are, um, and that they're normal to react like that. Yeah, okay. and how and they rule my life, and how I can learn that I don't need to react like that. And, uh, well, 
because now it's not happening to me. Yeah, you, but I live, I live in, in that it is yeah. happening to me, and that's that frozen bit. I'm still that frozen as that child, mm. and I need to part um, helping me be an adult and move on from that child and um, look at how my life is impacted um, because of it and how I can adapt and manage one, manage the reality and, and of that I have been raped by somebody when I was little yeah, and I guess as well it's recognising that you are an adult anyway. Um, it, ultimately it's about taking responsibility and saying, you know, are you learning? These things are happening to you now. They're recording in your brain and it just keeps playing you back to you. But you're getting interested in the recording. If you're not the recording and you're not all this stuff that's being recorded in, in your brain, it's how I'm looking to say, who am I then? Because I'm you're the one that's listening to the recording. That's who you are. You you're listening to it. It's not you. You're not literally logically and you know from your frontal lobe deciding this is what I'm going to say to myself when I wake up tomorrow. You wouldn't decide to say all the things that you're saying to yourself tomorrow. You wouldn't decide to um, make a plan of what you're going to do, how many steps am I going to do tomorrow, the recording is just playing it and playing it and playing it, but would you logically decide this is the way I'm going to live my life? I hate the way I live my life. So who's that so. that hates it then? If there's only one, in the, one of you in there, who is it that hates the way that you live your life? The one who's actually doing it. The, it's all the ego yeah. that plays it out. I'm doing it and I'm doing these routines and I'm living this certain way, but I hate it. I'm frightened all the time. I hate it. I don't feel any enjoyment in anything. I don't feel any purpose. I don't feel, I don't well, feel safe anywhere. Okay. So then why do you think that the ego records that? Yeah. The brain records it. It's a recording machine and then it plays it back but it also plays the other side sometimes you might argue with yourself and it's all the ego, it's not you none of it's you but it's playing, it's just playing and you're the one that's interested in it and then it can change its mind if it wants it changes the recording not that it's doing anything to you it just wants to keep you safe so it keeps, keeps the you know, if you think why do people like watching horror films or danger or soaps that are, that are quite nasty week after week after week and it's because it gets the the amygdala interested because it wants its job is to keep it safe but it gets abused does the amygdala it gets abused because we keep feeding it nasty things to to light it up and because it lights it up then you know we can all feel unsafe yeah that's why we get all these bad news all the time and we incessantly watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it because you ultimately want to be safe but it's not, it's dangerous and it's damaging to us because it's been abused all the time but if you then decided what if I didn't do that it wouldn't have all those things to, re to play to replay over and over again so it's like saying okay, if I to re were to record nasty things onto a recorder and said there you go listen to that every day would you? no what I am doing exactly that's what I'm so doing so it's it's that it's saying you wouldn't you know you, you know when you're speaking from your front of love you're saying I wouldn't do that but actually the how you've been programmed does do that mm. so there's a part of you that has the option as your own free will if you took responsibility and said okay what can I do about about that recording because that's the one that's got all the labels so it's not actually you because if it was you there'd be no therapy it'd be like there's nothing you can do there's nothing anyone can do it's just who you are and you kind of know that and be happy with it mm. but 
you want to change as soon as how you know that you can and you have changed a lot so who is who is that that's made those changes that thinks differently because the ego doesn't change itself a recording doesn't change its own recording i must be yeah so you're the one that blocks it out and you're yeah. the one that that knows there's something different but you're the one that's buried under all of it the real you is buried under all of it when you were born you were full of confidence you had no fear you had none of those things they didn't just come upon you you began to react to the world you weren't reacting to you you were reacting to your environment mm. and then you begin to believe what everybody told you is who you are but it isn't yeah and sometimes I'm able to understand that and accept that and then sometimes the voice is too powerful and that I, be I believe it and, and stuff. Why do you believe it and why do you believe it's so powerful? Is it just because you've been doing it for such a long time? It's been said to you for such a long time that you believe it. Or do you believe it because logically you can tell that it's actually true? Are these labels true of you? N no. Well... No. Because whenever we explore anything, it always comes back to what happened when I was little and my response and my reactions and how my reactions made other people respond to me and everything. All the stuff that I hate about myself, all the stuff that I don't like about life and about the world I'll go back to that and I forget that sometimes because I'm so busy being upset or distressed or not wanting to exist because I, I don't I don't like the feelings that I've got that sometimes I need someone just to pull me out of it and say You've gone back in the soup. Yeah. Okay. And so and and I'm not at the minute in a in a place where I can do that myself. But you are. You can. You're all the real you's always with you, and all as you have to do is ultimately stop being interested in that voice. You just have to be interested in something else. But you are so interested in the voice. That's what. Ultimately, what's happening is that you're so interested in it. You're so interested in the feeling. And the feeling almost validates, well, it must be true because I've got this feeling. But it's not. None of it is. It's like, you know, say that you, like you say, you will get treatment if you go and say this. Yeah, but so that's ultimately what labels are for. It's like, if you went to a shop and you wanted to buy a TV, they had to name that machine for you to go into the shop and be able to purchase, purchase it, unless you just tapped on it and that's what, we, that's what was invented, we just tapped on things. But, so you, when you go into a shop, you go into an electrical shop and you say, I want a TV. Well, that's been labelled, that machine's been labelled mm -hmm. a TV. And then if you go and you want a video camera, you'll say, I want a video camera. And if you go and you want to get treated, it's like, what do you want to get treated for? So everybody, what, do, what would you like? Oh, I'd like a TV. And then you go to hospital. Okay, what, what, how can we help you? I've got OCD. So, but you, you're carrying OCD, you're doing OCD, you're not OCD. So the same as when you work going for a TV, you're not a TV, are you, when you go and get one? You're just going to carry it home. You're going to have it in your world. But it doesn't, it's not you, that's the same for the labels. 
but we just need the labels, the, the good in one sense, although you're not the misunderstanding, that you're not the label, but it's just part of, you know, well, I'm carrying this, I'm doing it. So, but you can't say, you'd never say you're a TV, would you? So, you're not OCD either. I think you just do if OCD. people continue to use labels, they need to know actually what the labels mean and what the reality is like for have, for somebody having that label. But sometimes they can be scary, can't they? Labels, if you get lots of labels, it's like, whoa, what are you going to do with all this? Is there a lot? And it's only actually one thing you're dealing with, which is a reaction to to when you were young. And not just when you were you were real, you know, your relational patterns of behaviour as well, of, of how you interact with others and, others and how they're interacting with you. And one of them was stupid. And that's how you were reacted to, so you believed it. Yeah. And learning. But they were just ways of... Did you get lost who you were doing was in all of this? <laughs> <laughs> I got very... Um, a lot of hatred towards myself and a lot of um, guilt towards myself. Well, that's one of the things that therapy has helped me with. It's, it's let me leave the guilt um, to one side and not feel guilt anymore because I used to feel really guilty for who I was and how I treated people um, and how I treated my dad because I used to hit him and how I didn't like people and I wanted to get away from people. I had a lot of, I felt a lot of guilt that I was a bad person and not nice and not helpful. And therapies let me leave that to one side. And also when um, I did begin to acknowledge that I had been abused as a child I felt a lot of guilt about um, not protecting other people that might have been at risk because I didn't say anything, even though I didn't know there was anything to say. Um, I felt a lot of guilt that I'd put other people at risk and that if other people had got hurt like I had, that was my fault for not saying anything. So I felt a lot of guilt about that. Um, and I felt a lot of guilt of... Um, that it was the difficulties that I were having as an adult, I'd brought on myself by not saying anything when I was little. So you were being punished by you as well? Yeah, because um, one, of, one of the things my mum would always say is, but you never said anything, why didn't you say anything? So I felt a lot of guilt that I didn't say anything even though I didn't know I had something to say. Um, I felt a lot of guilt that I'd brought on all my difficulties myself and if I'd have spoken about them when I was little I might not have had all these difficulties and be this horrible person that I thought I was as an adult. How um, could a five year old sort out a life like that? Sort out difficulties for when you were an adult? How could a child do that? If you were saying you didn't know she, you, when you were young why would you know? Why would you know by the way you were spoke to or you know, what you were what you learned? How would you know? I didn't, but I just saw um I interpreted what my mum said as that it's my own fault. If I'd have said something when I was little it could have been ad addressed. I could have and so that I wouldn't have had my difficulties in my adult so thought very simplistically. I wouldn't have had the difficulties in, as I have been an adult. So really, I've brought all these difficulties on myself and I felt a lot of guilt um, about that. Um, but again, therapy's helped me put that guilt aside um, um, and also helped me not take on the guilt 
and the responsibility for other people that might have been in the same situation as me mm. because I did feel a lot of guilt that I'd put because I hadn't said anything when I was little I'd possibly put other young people at risk but when actually the perpetrator yeah. is the one that puts and that's what therapies helped me understand yeah. that I wasn't I'm not the guilty one um, so yeah so that's when you say earlier on what do I need that's what I have needed is therapy to help me understand all these things not solve things not magically make me a different person that would help me understand things so I've been able to put things to one side I've, do, I've done the actual work it's therapy that's helped me get to that point mm. um, what do you feel about you now and we kind of come to an end on that note but what do you feel about you now doing a video and you know how far you've come it seems a bit weird okay a bit I can see have I've developed and I've progressed in lots and lots of ways but then how I was feeling this morning it's like I haven't changed in 20 years those feelings and those thoughts were real and they were there and I had to do a lot of work to keep them at bay and not get in the soup with them and yeah. keep on the edge um, so it's it's a fine balance that I'm balancing at the moment and I know without therapy I'd be in it um, yeah okay but your life has changed to how you used to be mm. okay 